On the morning of Saturday the 8th of October, Germany was thrown into chaos as rail services right across the north of the country were brought almost to a standstill. The few trains that did run were hopelessly overcrowded and even though the technical defect that caused it was soon fixed, problems continued for the rest of the day. At first, cynical Germans may have described this as a normal day at Deutsche Bahn, but it wasn't long before news emerged that the technical defect was caused by deliberate damage. And as the weekend continued, the media started talking about sabotage. So in this video I will try to explain what happened, why it happened, why it's thought to be sabotage and who could have done it. But first, a caveat. As I record this, the investigation is still in its early stages. We do know what happened, but everything else is largely speculation. If some of it is proven false by the time you get to see this video, that's not my fault. So what happened? Well, basically at around 6.40 in the morning, a critical part of the communication system used by Deutsche Bahn went down in the whole of the north of Germany. This meant that train drivers couldn't communicate either with each other or with the control rooms. Now obviously it's a real problem trying to operate a dense high-speed rail network if nobody actually knows where any of the trains are. So for safety reasons, Deutsche Bahn had to stop most of the trains in that part of the country. How did it happen? At about 2am, a critical data cable in the city of Herne was severed. Now, that wasn't enough to bring down the system, but a few hours later, another cable was severed, this time in Berlin, and that caused the outage. The system was designed with redundancies in case of technical faults. If one cable was put out of action, the other cable would ensure that the system would continue working. Since they were at opposite ends of the country, it would be extremely unlikely for both of them to fail. And yet, that is exactly what happened. How do we know it was sabotage? Well, as I just said, two cables hundreds of kilometers apart had to be severed to bring the system down. Both cables were physically cut, and both cables were in conduits covered with heavy concrete slabs. In theory, it could have been two separate random acts of vandalism that just coincidentally took out the two cables needed to bring down the system in half the country. But the chances of that being the case are so tiny that we can safely ignore them. That leaves a deliberate act as the only reasonable explanation. Somebody knew exactly which cables to cut and how to access them. This is a critical system as we discovered when its failure caused chaos and is designed specifically not to be brought down by random chance. It's natural to assume that there were two saboteurs, one in Herne and one in Berlin, and they coordinated their attack, which is not as scary as it sounds. It just means that they agreed on a date and time. I think that is likely, but by my calculations, it is actually possible for one person to have have cut both cables. The cable in Berlin was cut four or five hours after the one at Herne, and I reckon that's just enough time to drive there, especially on the virtually empty autobahns in the dead of night. And they would have had to have driven. Somebody did suggest that they might ironically have taken the train, but then the earliest they could have got into Berlin would have been just after nine in the morning, and that would have got them to the Hauptbahnhof from where they would have had to have taken the S-Bahn all the way out to Karl. So, who could have done it, and what did they hope to achieve? In recent years, there have been a few acts of sabotage on the rail network. There have been attempts to blackmail Deutsche Bahn, simple vandalism, and politically motivated attacks that basically fit the definition of terrorism. I think we can rule out blackmail, and probably also most types of terrorism. But for example, in the past there have been deliberate attacks by radical left-wing extremists, but in such cases, the perpetrators have always claimed responsibility, and in this case, so far, nobody has. After all, for either blackmail or terrorism to work, you do have to know who is trying to blackmail or terrorize you. And as I just said, it's likely not random vandalism, because this seems to have been very carefully planned, which is the exact opposite of random. 
There is the possibility of a Deutsche Bahn worker who was sacked and decided to take revenge on their former employer. That would explain the inside knowledge, and as I said, it is possible for this to be the work of just one person. But according to the latest reports, investigators are seriously considering the possibility that this was the work of a foreign state. And the obvious finger of blame points at Russia, which has a track record of carrying out criminal acts in other countries. You may remember the time that they poisoned a political dissident in the English city of Salisbury. My initial reaction to this was that surely a cyber attack would be far more effective and much less risky. But according to RG Kritis, a think tank that specializes in IT security, there's been a huge increase in cyber attacks from Russia ever since they invaded Ukraine. These don't seem to have succeeded in doing very much though, so maybe Russia did resort to sending in a couple of guys armed with electric saws and diplomatic immunity. But why? Their actions caused a day of misery for rail passengers, but most Germans will probably tell you that they're used to that. Perhaps they were hoping for a much larger impact. Or perhaps, as Arge Kritis has suggested, this was actually a trial run for something bigger. Perhaps Russia wants to intimidate the EU or NATO. Or perhaps they were trying to impede the transport of military aid to Ukraine. At this stage, we just don't know. And to be honest, I don't think politicians are helping matters by telling us all to be prepared for further attacks on our critical infrastructure. I mean, yeah, but the Russians, if that is who did this, don't have a very good success rate when it comes to this sort of thing. I mean, think of it. Months of cyber warfare and all they have to show for it is a few hours chaos on the railways. That is something that Deutsche Bahn can easily manage on its own without outside help. And still. Ha. Ah, ran out of breath. The German rep. Hang on. Oh. Ah.